hit me. From Studio P in Sausalito, the home of the hit, it's time for... Suckatash. Yes, Suckatash, the comedy soundcast soundcast featuring snippets from comedy... Soundcasts. And also interviews with comedians, comedian soundcasters, and other showbiz folk. And now, here's your host, internationally recognized comedy soundcast soundcaster, Mark... Persia. Mark. Persia. Damn. Late with an episode again. Hi, friend. Yes, it's me, Mark Hershaw. Your every other weekly co host for Suckatash, the Comedy Soundcast Soundcast, and double damn if I'm not dropping this episode 324 a day late and a dollar short. To be honest, me and your co host Tyson Saner were way more than a dollar short. Just a reminder that we're basically producing this show for the love of the art that is soundcasting. We still have no real sponsors, just that freeloading Henderson's Pants outfit, which means we're putting our time in with no recompense, and I'm shelling out Dodi Odo out of my pocket for the production costs. That's 11 plus years of taking it on the chin for this medium. We used to have a donate button, but I'm not sure what happened to it. We are technically Amazon Associates, but I don't know where those links that brought in that pittance went either. Maybe we should do the Patreon thing. I don't know. You guys just want to try Venmoing us some money? Hey, that could work. Let's give that a try. Open up your Venmo app and send along what you want. A buck? Five bucks? A ten spot? Twenty dollars? Well, whatever. Just Venmo it to me. My handle is at... Hershko. Yeah, that's the at sign and H-E-R-S-H-C-O. Shoot along a little message and we'll give you muchos gracias on the next show. How about that? Has any soundcast even attempted this before? Yeah, we're Venmo it, baby. Let's make history. Speaking of history, last week in this very same feed, you could catch the aforementioned Tyson Saner holding court for Epi 323. And he had a cavalcade of Comedy Soundcast clippage for you. Well, three clips. Is that enough to technically be a cavalcade? I'm not sure. Let's look it up. Hmm, Let's see here. Webster's Dictionary. Cavalcade. Noun. Definition number one. A possession. No, a procession of riders or ships. Definition two. A dramatic sequence or procession. Series. So there, last week's show was definitely a cavalcade. Way to go, Tyson. You can still catch his show, The Autumn Triple Play, which included snippets from On the Rocks, where celebrities and cocktails mix, Gutting the Sacred Cow, and Chatabix. The episode still resides on Apple and Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, Audible.com, SoundCloud, Podchaser, Podbay, and wherever finer soundcasts are streamed and or downloaded. That includes our very own home site, SuckatashShow.com, which contains the entire treasure trove of installments dating back to 2011. For this week's Late to the Party Pal Mess, which I'm calling Debate, Argument, Brits, and Smut, you're in for some clips from If I Were You, The Legal Geeks, Off Menu, and Pornomity. Henderson's Pants is once again riding our coattails with a freebie spot for their classic bow trow pants. Classic because the references in the commercial are so damn old. We're already running late, so without further ado, here come the clips. Like us on Facebook. Our first clip comes from a show that just passed the 560th episode mark. It's If I Were You from HeadGum and features hosts Jake Hurwitz and Amir Blumenfeld. Both these guys are all over HeadGum because, well, they've been there since before it started. I mean, they're the ones who put it together. This show, If I Were You, drops every Monday and features the host edges, offering advice in realms that they both are and are not qualified to speak on. They invite listeners to send in their own sticky situations, as they put it, and they will help to find a solution. Our clip comes from their Milestone Epi 560, entitled Mile High Club, and their listener query gets them talking about UFOs and ghosts. 
A few months ago, my wife and I were driving on an elevated freeway near a lake. Oh, I was God. driving, and my wife pokes me and says, what the heck is that? Pointing over the lake. There was a large yellowish-looking blob of something floating dead still above 150 feet above the lake. It was not drifting in the wind or moving at all. It was not a drone or a balloon or a paraglider or anything else we could easily identify. I was driving about 70, so I only got a good couple seconds look. But here's the rub. I thought this was a crazy and interesting story, so next time we were out with friends, I brought it up thinking uh, of asking what they thought it could be or if they've ever seen something similar. And my wife immediately clammed up when, she, uh, when I started telling the story and totally refused to back me up. So I'm left sitting here explaining the story, sounding like a lunatic. Everybody looks uncomfortable, and the topic of discussion changed quickly. <laughs> Am I the crazy person here? Is there any way for me to share our experience without sounding like I'm nuts? Or is my wife right, and it would be better to just shut up and forget we ever saw anything? Help me settle this. Wow. I guess this isn't quite a debate. This is more angling towards the uh, just general advice question. But, yeah. Well, you, you know, know. We're ju we, just, we just decided to test out this pivot so we haven't actually called for any debates so this is the first yeah. time we're doing it um it, what did he say it, this is it was in a, it was floating in a lake or it was above the lake it was above 150 feet ish above the lake floating a brown blob yeah a yellowish blob describe it for me one more time large yellowish blob of something floating dead still above about 150 feet above the lake hmm Interesting. Have you ever had a UFO-esque thing happen to you? Uh, no. No. Nothing that couldn't be explained. Yeah, and then when people do bring stuff like that up to you, like, it had, what else could it be? Whenever somebody says that to me, yeah. it's like, I saw this figure, what else could it be? And I'm like, I don't know, it could be anything. I'm like, no, yeah. like, you can't explain it. It has to be this thing. I think that's the ticket right there, though. It's like, you don't have to know what it was for it to be. It's an unidentified flying object. But UFO doesn't automatically mean alien spaceship. It means I didn't know what it was. So, like, if there is a satisfying answer out there, you're allowed to keep on asking the question as long as you're not leading people to be like, so I saw an alien. Uh, here's what it looked like. <laughs> You try to fucking tell me what a yellow blob over a lake was, because there probably isn't a rational explanation. There usually is. Yeah, I'm usually too skeptical. I will, I'll, I'll be the last person. Like, if you saw an alien and told me about it in detail, I would first not believe you. Yeah. Uh, before ever like coming to the realization that you saw an alien. So I also wouldn't believe it. I don't think I would ever see a UFO and be like, I saw. I saw like I would go to you and be like I saw an alien. I would go to you and be like something presented itself to me like an alien, <laughs> but I know that it's not. So what is it? Yeah. So like, and I'll be like, what was it? And you'll be like, it's a flying saucer the size right. of a building hovering ten feet above my house. For yeah, the I think you're part of an hour, and a green creature came out of it, <laughs> and I was probed. <laughs> <laughs> Anally or otherwise. I think that like you're not like, crazy. That didn't happen. Yeah, you're not crazy for seeing something, but it would be crazy if you assumed and told people that it was an alien. But you haven't done that. He's <laughs> saying, "Here's what we saw. What do you think it was?" Yeah. Um, I mean, ghost stories are very similar. Don't you have a similar like I have a ghost story situation? When I was little, I thought that I saw a ghost, and I and like I have memories of seeing those ghosts when I was little. But I think it was just like being a kid and my eyes were tired or like, you know, even now sometimes I'll like, did I tell you about how I woke up and I thought there was a crow in our room? <laughs> you woke up in the middle of the night thinking a black bird was in your room. Yeah, it was fun. It was so scary. That's a taste of if I were you. And although you should know it's available from pretty much every Soundcast distribution point known to man, you can always head over to our home site, SuccotashShow.com, where we have clickable links to the shows and the host's socials right there in every episode's blog piece. So check that out. This next clip is from not only a show I mentioned I was going to be on, namely The Legal Geeks, but it's from the show I was on and in fact features me along with show host Josh Gilliland and some other attorneys. Josh co-hosts the show with Jessica Matterson, but she was traveling the week I was on, unless she was just a 
avoiding me. I was asked to be an expert witness, along with a bunch of other legal eagles, including Gregory Pang and a cast of their regulars. The show is entitled Review of the She-Hulk, Attorney at Law, Episode 5. And because my day job finds me in the world of branding, trademarks, and other such intellectual property, or IP, IP every morning. Josh invited me along to ring on ring in with some trademark issues that the Jessica Walters character, played by Tatiana Maslany, has to tangle with in that episode. Namely, She-Hulk gets sued for trademark infringement over the use of the She-Hulk name by one of her enemies. Now, was it clarified that it was that it was a federal case? Because it could have been a state registration, trademark registration, uh, as opposed to a federal. True, and like, you can make state court trademark claims or trade dress tra- uh, claims as well. So, uh, but it had the TM. So it's like, why are well, procedurally the, uh, it's just weird? I well, mean, now here's the here's the thing about the TM and the circle R that people may not know. You can put the TM on something if you have registered. For the product but have not yet received your registration when you get your registration that's when you can put the circle r on there so anybody can use the tm it just indicates that you have re- you're in the process of trying to get your registration and maybe that's what titania did like it was a rush to market of law firms hired jennifer we're going to try to hurt her yeah just because so the TM is actually factual, which is kind of interesting. She, they didn't say, well, it's a circle R, which would mean she got the registration. So that's kind of an interesting wrinkle. Yeah. And Mark, and I think that's why I said that it's not, it wasn't uh, you know, so cl- clear to me whether she, because she was suing for infringement, that indicates registration, but it was not quite established that she had registered. So you are right. Yeah. In, the, in that style of clause where they put the, where she lifted her party, put the little tm well actually just on that point uh i I found it a little bit weird and maybe my learned american council here can enlighten me here uh in the i freeze uh did a freeze frame of it and um the way that titania lists herself as the party i thought was kind of strange mary mcferrin as owner of she hulk tm by titania a company so usually in a in infringement action or passing off action or uh, un- toward of unfair com- competition to state yourself as the owner of the trademark you're stating as a fact where that's some, that's a fact that you have to prove still that you have that entitlement because you have the registration or you've been using it whatever really interesting and mary mcpherson as owner of she hulk tm by titania comma a company have you seen that before you know it's they're they're playing with we will make lawyer words like magic like if you <laughs> you're, if you own a corporation it's the corporation suing you don't say and in my personal capacity as the president of the corporation i'm suing you too no i'm like this is why we have corporate law why people <laughs> form a, a private corporation or llc or limited liability partnership. It's why we have the entire concept of, of corporations is so that's not a personal cause of action. So that way it protects the, the individual from personal liability. So that's just, someone thought, I oh, yeah, this would look cool. So backstory on the Legal Geek Soundcast. These are real lawyers headed up by Josh and Jessica, and they sound off on legal issues faced by fictional characters. Everything from the MCU to the Star Wars universe and way, way beyond. Not only on the Soundcast, but they show up in places like Comic-Con in San Diego and run mock trials based on situations that crop up in these TV shows, movies, comic books, and so forth. Super fun, super funny, super technical at times. Definitely check them out. That's the Legal Geeks. Remember back toward the beginning of the show, I mentioned our fake sponsor, Henderson's Pants? Yeah, well, their time has come. Oh, Brad, I wish this moment could last forever. Oh, I wish it would too, Letitia, but you'll have to excuse me. I have to go to the bathroom. Jack Bauer wouldn't have to go to the bathroom, especially at a time like this. Jack Bauer? 
The guy from 24? In eight seasons, that guy saved the world over 23 times and never once had to spoil the moment by having to go to the bathroom. Gee, I wish I could be more like Jack Bauer. Me too, Brad. The wedding's off. Now you can control your bladder just like TV special agent Jack Bauer with the Bow Trow from Henderson's, modeled after the actual trousers worn by Jack Bauer of the hit TV show 24. The Bow Trow allows the wearer up to 24 hours of complete bowel and bladder control without pain, discomfort, or permanent damage to sensitive intestinal or urinary tracts. Before bow trow, avoiding embarrassing moments like these could only be achieved after months of difficult exercises, painful catheterization, or bulky adult diapers. But now, thanks to the same fabrics used on U.S. government restraining tables, the bow trow gently but firmly puts that call of nature on hold, freeing you up to save the world or just your little piece of it. It's a beautiful moon tonight, Brad. And if you'll notice, we've been staring at it for over six hours. Yes. Thank, Thank you, Bow Trow. Bow Trow from Henderson's. Innovation in trousers and pantaloons since 1896. And now back to more of Suckatash. This next soundcast is where the Brits part of this week's title comes from. It's Off Menu, featuring a pair of British comedians, Ed Gamble and James Acaster. Every episode, they invite a guest into what they term their magical restaurant to choose their favorite starter, that's an appetizer to us Yanks, main course, side dish, dessert, and drink. It's all just a glorious excuse to deep dive into heady and sometimes silly convo with their guests. A recent episode featured the fantastic, amazing, and England's national treasure, Richard E. Grant. This clip goes from silly to the sublime, as Richard slides into how his late wife's last wish fueled his recently released memoir, A Pocket Full of Happiness. Well, before you were born, there was a French and Saunas comedy team of two female comics that oh, had a sketch where two schoolgirls and one was, one had, you know, a big chocolate something yeah. and the other one was edging towards her to try and try and yeah. get a little bite. And as she got within inches of her, Jennifer Saunders' character just stuffed the whole thing into her mouth. And I thought, that's me. I identified that completely. Before you were born, Ed, that's a compliment. Yes, thank yeah. you. That you well, you're both very young. Saunders. How old do you think we, we are, Richard? Uh, 25. Oh. Well, both of us? Yeah. I love it. I love it. I'm 36. I'm oh, 37. Yeah. Well, listeners, they're using donkey sperm treatment <laughs> to keep their, their skin as taut as I don't know what Please. to mention. Don't don't give away our secrets. Okay. Yeah. We, 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 so, we, we told you, we to told to you when, we, when you came into the studio, we said, ignore the donkey in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> ignore the donkey. No, <laughs> you're looking marvellous. I put it all over our faces. Very okay, good lighting. You've both got your own hair and teeth, so you. You know, I'm yeah. envious. <laughs> <laughs> are you are you much of a foodie, Richard, in general? Yeah. I Yes. Uh, have you ever had somebody who's come to your show that doesn't like food? I mean, there are lots of things I don't like to eat, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'm, I love cooking and I love eating. Well, before we started recording, there's a brief conversation you were having with the great Benito about Wivnell and I. And one of the uh, bits of Wivnell that I always think about whenever I see anyone eat an egg sandwich is yeah. the bit at the beginning when they bite into the egg sandwich and then the yolk just yeah. pours out of the back of it like that. Oh, yeah. And it's when he's really depressed in London, he's like, I just want to need to get out of here. And he sees that happen. <laughs> and I just think about it every time. <laughs> every time I'm eating an egg sandwich yeah. or anything like that, I think about that. So how, so how often uh, are you eating a soft fried not, egg sandwich? Joe, what? Not as much anymore. Yeah, right. not as much as when it was before I saw that film. Because you're so rich now. So <laughs> I'm, I'm rich as hell, yeah. but also because that film, um, which I saw before, I was so rich, uh, made me think. Oh, I can't. Egg sandwiches are gross. Like it just, it just. I agree with you. It suddenly represented despair for me. It's, it's very like interesting because I heard you mention that just then. Yeah. The egg sandwich, and I thought, oh, he's going to say it makes him love an egg sandwich. Yeah. Because I love a fried egg sandwich. The Do pop, you? when you bite into it and you feel the yolk pop and it dribbles out, I love that. Yeah, but can you eat an egg and cress cold sandwich, which is like a fart between two slices? I'm not of a fan of egg and cress. We're bonding enormously yeah, yeah, already. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 We're we have friends. to catch up, you and I, Blondie. Yeah, uh, listen, <laughs> Slow and Steady wins the race. I'm going I'm to yeah, be there by the end. You can get there. This is hair and tortoise stuff. <laughs> also very excited to talk about your new book, Thank A you. Pocket Full of Happiness, a memoir. It's uh, quite a personal book. Uh, yeah, it came about 
because on New Year's Day at the beginning of this year, I posted something on, uh, posted a video on social media in which I had said that my late wife had said to me four days before she died, um, at the end of September uh, 2021, I know that you'll be sad, but try and find a pocket full of happiness in each day. And that really has been a sort of a hatch of uh, what you call a hallmark card, corny as it may sound. I, I've, my daughter and I have found it really useful to try and, you know, get over the canyon of grief that you have to navigate your way through on a daily basis to find something that is going to make you happy. So you guys are my pocketful today That's so uh, far no, no pressure yeah no, so I'm it's a pocketful of happiness yeah, so it's a I'm memoir that yet. you know begins with you know when she was diagnosed and ends when she died and then seesaws back in time to how we first met and mm. i combined careers over 40 years so you know lots of showbiz stuff in amongst all the all the other so wow and did, did you find that writing it sometimes that was the little the bit of happiness you found each day was like writing about that memory? Well, when my literary agent called and said at the beginning of January um, that a publisher had asked if I would write write a memoir, I immediately said no. And then my daughter wisely said, I think that this will help you because it will force you to get out of you know your own head and going down the rabbit hole of grief. And it proved absolutely right. So I'm very grateful. But I, I did make a Verizon with her that I said, in order not to jeopardise my relationship with her, my daughter, I would write the whole thing out first, make an agreement with the publisher that I wouldn't take a penny of the advance until my daughter had read it and either vetoed a section or the whole thing. Oh. And they willingly took that risk, for which I'm very grateful. And she read it, kept me waiting for three days. And I thought, <laughs> bloody hell, I was I speak to her twice a day. I've absolutely blobbed. And then she said, there's one paragraph that you I want changed because the person who will read it m could interpret it in a way that they could see as being critical. Mm -hmm. um, so she's protecting somebody. And she said, you got... The, the surname of one, one of my friends wrong. It's missing an S. <laughs> and that was it. So I thought, That's well, not bad know. for notes, really, yeah, is it? I That's was absolutely good. amazed. So she said, no, you've absolutely captured what, you know, your wife, uh, her mum was like and what your relationship was and all of that stuff and your career. So she said, you know, warts and all, it's, it's good. I always get so excited whenever I see a movie or TV show and Richard E. Grant pops up. He's always great. And it was terrific fun to hear him on Off Menu because I also enjoy the hosts, Ed Gamble and James Acaster, in their many incarnations, because besides chairing this soundcast, they're both actors and writers in stuff that I'm sure you've seen. Well, I have anyway. Is that snobby? Last show off the bench today is only because of alphabetization. It's a new soundcast, just a few episodes in, entitled Pornomedy. Yeah, porn. Omedy, P O R N O M E D Y. It's hosted by a good friend of Succotash, Monica Hamburg, who has not only had a couple of soundcasts we've featured over the past bunch of years, but was also our special guest host way back on episode 64 in July of 2013, almost 10 years ago. She sent in this clip of Pornomedy along with a note from which I quote the following Hi, Mark. I hope you're doing well. Yes, I am, Monica. Thank you. So, I started a new podcast recently, Pornomedy. Yeah, I just mentioned it, which explores the weird world of free porn sites. Absurd porn comments, as though any aren't. Terrible titles, baffling tags, and more. This time, hilarious Baltimore comedian Mike Moran joins me. We speak of The Chair as in it who must not be named, as well as a porn commenter with maximum game, the right time to rent a truck for your porn film, and much more. This is only the third episode of this new podcast, although it's on the feed with the other shows I've done. She knows it's a soundcast, but anyway. Uh, but I like it. I hope you do too. Of course, as always, no pressure, but if it's not right for the show, you know. Not right for the show, Pfft. Oh, Monica, you do go on. And so does your clip right now. The next one is Twat and Wazoo Acquire Pounded. Their stocks are really going to go up. Twat and Wazoo Acquire... What? What's going on here? <laughs> Who knows? Acquire Pounded. Pounded, acquired. <laughs> That's what they're saying. <laughs> Success achieved. <laughs> Who are Twat and Wazoo? <laughs> They're like these really adorable children's characters. That's what it sounds like. It sounds like <laughs> hand puppets of some kind who can teach us about safety. 
And it's only a five minute clip, which I feel like that's too fast to come. Well, not everyone's on antidepressants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I just hope Twad and Wazoo the best, no matter what's going on with them. God bless Twad and Wazoo. It's really funny that people use these immature terms. They're watching a fuck film. They're taking it upon themselves to upload said fuck film. And then they're still like, it's the place P comes out of. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're using all these like kiddie ter- these like G rated terms. for yeah. uh, That makes it even more creepy somehow. This one is demonically possessed daughter seduces father. My issue with this whole thing was that this guy had a tag called decent acting. Decent acting. There's ghost, there's a succubus, there's monster girl, but it's the acting that's preventing you from believing. (laughs) I thought you were going to go like through a list of movies. Like you're like, there's ghost, there's good fellas, there's on the waterfront. And there's this point, like you were like listing movies with good acting. (laughs) That's brilliant. No, I wasn't going in that direction, but I love it. Good acting important to you in a porn? Not at all. No, no, because I don't watch any of the actual acting part. Really? No, I can't stand that's the that. Best part. OK, it's not the best part. But as far as like actually psychologically like drawing you in, you know, and turning, I feel like you got to have that. I can imagine up until sex in my brain. It's just the sex part that fucks really? me up. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what it is, but there's something about like context that can make it like hotter for me. They have plots for a reason. So I understand that like the majority of people must like plots in it, but like that just doesn't work for me. Uh, But also, (laughs) but also the acting's not the level of Goodfellas. So that's my biggest problem. That's a sample, a free sample of Pornomity. First one's free from our pal, Monica Hamburg. It's always free. Look for it on Apple Podcasts and I'm sure soon available all over the place. I miss doing the tweet sack. Hi, Tweety last episode I hosted because I had a real live email to read from. That was a, that was a treat. But here's the latest rundown from those folks in Soundcasts, kind enough to sprinkle our at Suckatash show handle into their socials over the past couple of weeks. Misfit Scully, Jock Doc Podcast, Hunter Block, Paul Gorton, Gnudes, G-N-U-D-Z, Gamer Geek, author C.J. Whitcomb, Sarah Halstead, Unspookable Podcast, Mr. Shaggy, Perry Kurtz, St. Paul Filmcast, Sunshine and Power Cuts, Odd Dad Out, Sensibly Cynical, Dr. Collision, and Paws the Dinosaur Hunter. Still no idea what that is. Halos and Heathens, Salty Language Pod, The Amazing Nerd Show, I Shake My Head with Lisa and Sam, Different Way Games, Nate Dufort, Married Crazy in Podcasting, Dasha Landau, Mr. Toon, Romchuk, Leah Bonema, Harry Lamb, Liam R.J. Tucker, Ian, Rich Chasler, and Henrik Person, who tweeted, I thought it said, Runaway Fuck Tramp. Hmm, that's not a bad idea. Maybe, maybe our Runaway Truck Ramp line would get more calls if we called it the Runaway Fuck Tramp. Maybe we'll try that along with Venmo. Remember, Venmo us your money because we don't have sponsors. We don't have a donate button, but I just remembered I have Venmo. So reach into your hearts, reach into your wallets. Venmo me at Hershko. That's the at sign H-E-R-S-H-C-O. And, uh, you know, whatever a dollar, it doesn't matter. It's just interesting. We may be the only Soundcast supported by Venmo. That would be cool. Okay, friend, that's enough of that. And by that, I mean this episode 324 of Succotash. If you want more, there's always the archives. Or pour some fresh Succotash into your ears next week when Tyson Saner brings you episode 325, which is sure to delight. I'm out of here, but not before reminding you that if you're ever wandering down a dark, lonely street in the middle of the night and a shimmering figure emerges from the darkness and floats a few inches off the pavement towards you to ask, have you heard anything good lately? Won't you please pass the succotash? 
You've been listening to Sockatash, the comedy soundcast, soundcast, with your host, Mark Hershaw. Brought to you by Henderson's Pants and... Imagine your company's name right here. Rate us and review us at Apple and Google Podcasts. Find us on the web at SuckatashShow.com. On Spotify. On Stitcher. On iHeartRadio. On YouTube. On SoundCloud. And wherever fine soundcasts are streamed and or downloaded. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Suckatash Show. Like us on Facebook. Email us at marc at SuckatashShow.com. Or call into the Suckatash Skype line at our toll call number 818-921-7212. The number again is 818-921-7212. You can also upload clips from your favorite comedy soundcasts directly to us using our direct upload link at Hightail.com slash you slash Suckatash. Suckatash is produced and engineered by Joe Paulino through the auspices of Studio P. Sausalito, the home of the hit. Our hosts are Mark Hershon and Tyson Saner. Our musical director is Scott Carvey. Our booth assistant is Kenny Durges. Suckatash is executive produced by Mark Hershon. Until next time, I'm your loyal booth announcer, Bill Haywatt, reminding you to please pass the Suckatash goodbye. This has been a Succotash Patch production. <laughs>